This video is about human factors or the application of ergonomics and anthropometrics in relation to the design of products. Now, what is ergonomics? Well, ergonomics effectively is the human machine interface. So we interact with products, systems and environments on a daily basis. And it's that interaction that we need to concern ourselves with or an ergonomist would concern themselves with to enable the product or the environment or the system to be used in a safe and easy and a comfortable way. In terms of products, we might be considering things like the, the grip on a toothbrush or the interaction between you and a computer mouse. In terms of systems, it might be the processing of a product through a manufacturing plant for a range of stages or perhaps in a production line to ensure that that is done in the most efficient way. And in terms of an environment, we might be concerning ourselves with things like a kitchen environment where you'd be considering working triangles. So basically the spacement or places between an oven, a fridge and a sink or the, the kind of key areas that you need to work on to ensure again that you're not wasting energy by moving in, in an inefficient way, but also so you're safe in that environment as well. You're not spilling over things or in a, in a busy working kitchen, you're not in, uh, interacting with others in a, in a bad way. But also in terms of environments, you might be considering things like the reach envelope within a car. Now, cars are a very good environment to discuss if this question comes up uh, regarding ergonomics and you have to choose a, a product to talk about because within your seat in a car, there are lots of ergonomic factors to consider and your reach envelope in terms of what you can actually touch and reach from the seated position when you know uh, belt is into a car is obviously very important to, to enable you to be safe and to operate the car in the the easiest possible way. Now, where we are considering ergonomics when designing products, for example, we have to think about how to make the product as fit for purpose, as safe, as easy to use, and as comfortable as humanly possible. Now, one way of looking at this is to think about all the possible senses. We might consider the touch of a product. So again, going back to the example of, let's say, a, a toothbrush, we want it to be maybe grippy so that it doesn't fall out of our hands if it gets wet. We might want it to be a bit spongy or elastic in our hands so it's kind of comfortable and it, it improves our grip in that sense. We might also be thinking about sight as a, a sense. So if we think about our car interior, there's a series of lights and panels and things like this and you quite often see things light up when they're turned on or they might light up in particular colors so red is normally considered sort of with things like that are bad or a warning whereas green is normally on and it's, it's a good sign okay and, and some of this is related to color theory in nature as well so if we think about perhaps lizards and insects which are poisonous they often use sort of bright colors and things as a warning and this idea of using bright colors as warnings has, has been used in products as well in the same sort of way in addition to touch and sight even our hearing as well can improve the ergonomics of a product so for example when we come to a pedestrian crossing in the in the street in addition to the fact that we've got the the light up little green man as it were appearing on the the panel in addition to this we hear that beeping sound which indicates that it's safe to cross the road at that point so further increasing the ergonomics of that product and even although it sounds ridiculous even things like smell could improve the ergonomics of the product. One example of this would be a gas leak in your house. You can smell the gas. Now, gas is obviously odourless and colourless, but by adding in that, that terrible sort of rotten egg smell into the gas, it means that we're indicated straight away that there is a gas leak or that one of our gas burners has been left on and we know then to turn it off or to uh, you know do something about it. So it is even a, an ergonomic factor there using smell to improve a product. Now, what is quite closely linked to ergonomics is the study of anthropometry or anthropometrics within the design of the product. Now, the word anthropometrics comes from the Greek words anthropos, meaning human, and metron, meaning measure. OK, so if we put those two words together, human measure or human measurements, that's what we're discussing. Now, in addition to the measurements of humans, such as their height, their hand size, their breadth, their, their shoe size, perhaps we might be looking at these things. In addition to this, we might also consider sort of strength factors and things like reach as well. OK, so if we are going to design a product that, that someone's got to use, we are considering their size, but also their capabilities as a person as well to ensure that the product is, again, safe, easy to use and comfortable. 
for them. Now, when we are designing for humans, we generally consider what is considered the, the averages or the, the norms, I suppose, for, for humans. Now, if we're discussing, for example, height, as you can see in the table below, the majority of people or lots and lots of people have an average height. Let's say it's Perhaps for a man, it might be something like five feet and nine inches in the UK or five foot ten, perhaps. OK, now that would be our 50th percentile because the, the largest percentage of the population or frequency of the population would be of around about that height. Now, as we get much, much smaller, we drop into the lower percentiles. And as we get much bigger, we'll drop into the higher percentile. So perhaps the 95th percentile, there might be a few people who are around about perhaps six foot six. In the lower end of the spectrum, in the fifth percentile, just before it drops off, we might be considering uh, people or males of height around about five feet or quite small people, OK, but still within the realms of um, the, the kind of this average between the fifth and the 95th percentile. And this is generally what designers design for. And obviously, this can cause issues for some people who are outside of these ranges, either they're particularly tall, like perhaps a basketball player or someone who's particularly small or indeed children who, who fall into sort of a special category due to their size or their height. OK, so if we are concerning ourselves with upper and lower percentiles, they then fall into sort of what might be designed as other groups or sometimes special groups. In addition to people who are particularly small or particularly tall, special groups or other groups might incorporate the elderly who perhaps are a little more frail or don't have the capabilities of a, of a, a younger person. Uh, we discussed children as well. But also perhaps a pregnant woman might have to have a specific clothes designed for them or have additional products that help them in their day to day life. People who have physical impairments, so perhaps someone who is in a wheelchair might have to have their house or their the building where they work altered to enlarge the doors to allow their wheelchair to pass through or perhaps light switches perhaps being lowered so that they can access those in, an, in the normal way. In addition to this, obviously, as I discussed, people outside that 5th and 95th percentile range. So in most cases, as I said, we do design for people within that normal range. But even within that range, we have to consider the, the sort of product as well. So if we discuss, for example, the design of a door, OK, we wouldn't want to use the 50th percentile because that, well, this would mean that anyone above the height of sort of 5 foot 10 would have to sort of stoop down to be able to pass through the door effectively. And... Similarly, if we was designing a chair, we probably wouldn't design it for people at that range as well, because smaller people perhaps might have difficulty in sort of raising themselves up to be able to sit comfortably on the chair. So, as I said, we're looking at the mean range between 5th and 95th, bearing in mind the fact that most people fall into that middle category, that 50th percentile. Now, in the exam, you might be asked to uh, critically evaluate ergonomic features or be asked how anthropometrics and ergonomics has been used to to design a product and you might be asked to critique it or compare and contrast between one product and another now obviously keep in mind some of the facts that what we've we've talked about okay so ergonomic products should be safe they should be easy to use and they should be comfortable to use as well. So they shouldn't cause repetitive strain injuries or eye strain or something like this when they're using that product. In addition to this, we're obviously considering all of the factors, all of our senses that we need to take into account. So we're talking about touch. We're talking about the sound features, the, the sight, so to do with the aesthetics of the product, but also potentially, I suppose, that sort of smell and taste may come into it somewhere as well. Now, if we look at the example of a toothbrush, as shown in some of the questions you might receive, we can see the way I would approach answering this question is to firstly draw the toothbrush. OK, they always ask you to draw or sketch products in the exam. So the first thing I do is, is take a drawing of the toothbrush and I'd highlight all the key features. So in this case, um, on the toothbrush shown there, I'm highlighting the overmolded feature the uh, injection molding sort of body of the uh, toothbrush, that small hinge and obviously the bristles at the end as well. After I've labelled my parts, I would list those parts in the table so it's nice and clear for the examiner to see and evaluate. I've only done this sort of briefly just 
pointing out key points. I'll probably write in a lot more detail on the exam. But for example, the, the TPO over molding, it provides grip. However, there's an issue there where it might lack texture. So again, when I'm evaluating, I'm considering all the senses. I'm kind of body storming the object to see how I would use that on a day to day basis and be critical. But also pick out any features that are good as well. Finally, what I need to do is extensively sketch and annotate the improvements. Now, if you look at the bottom page, I've just done this with one particular feature. I'm focusing on that over molded body or handle there of the toothbrush. And in this case, I've, I've suggested the fact that there's, there's an issue with grip there that could be improved even further by introducing ridges or perhaps bumps to the the, uh, the handle there and that would improve the grip and what I'd do is go on and try and think about every single factor and draw a separate picture and annotate in a separate way for every way I can improve the product and this way I'll hopefully succeed in that exam.